Hi, my name is Daniel. I'm Global Product Manager for Automation and Inline Inspection at Syntagon. When it comes to parenteral pharmaceutical manufacturing, the inspection is a mandatory task to ensure the highest product quality but also the patient safety. We at Syntagon, we offer both solutions for inline inspection but also solutions for end of line inspection. Every reject of the mostly very cost intensive products means loss of money. So what do we inspect? The first thing in a fill finish process is that we inspect the empty vial for cosmetic defects of the bottom and of the opening. Next step is to ins inspect the stopper, especially the stopper gap. Then the inspection of the crimping is mandatory. Next inspection task is the cap roundness inspection where we check for cosmetic defects and the color of the flip up of. What we have also in our portfolio are smart network cameras to monitor the machine functionality but also interventions of the operator. And last but not least, we have print several printer in our portfolio, laser, inkjet and also the print verification. My colleague Wolfram will now explain you how our end-of-line solutions complement what you have seen now. Thanks Daniel for introducing our inline inspection solutions. Now in the packaging area we are taking over here with our end-of-line inspection machines adding complementing the inline inspection. Why do we do this additional step here? So, First of all, very simple, there's a clear requirement in all major pharmacopoeias that each final container, so meaning filled and finished, of all parenteral preparations should be inspected to the extent possible for the presence of observable um, particulates. And every container in which the contents shows evidence of the presence of such particulates must be rejected. At the same time, we also have to avoid false rejects by some misidentification in case of dust outside. Remember, we are not in the clean room area anymore. We have to take care that we do not waste um, valuable product here at this stage just because a camera might have misidentified such a dust particle outside as a particle inside. Now, we have different kinds of defects, particle defects, depending on the particle flora in the factory. This could be something like a metal particle. This could be a kind of fiber. Different fibers, dark one or more transparent one. This could be something like a floating particle. This could be a piece of glass. This could be some rubber material. This could be other type of floating particle, small dark particles, bright particles of various shapes and sizes. And still remember here, the golden standard is the human eye. So this means observable um, particulates. Now, when we want to differentiate such particles from less critical defects like dust outside or also scratches outside somehow, then we have to use spinning, so bring the content into motion and with it also the particulates. To do this, Typically, we use something like you can see here, this turret with spindles, where then um, the container is spinned up to some thousands of rounds per minute. During the spinning process, we bring the particulates into motion. And then we stop. Still, by its inertia, the liquid is moving. And we take a sequence of different images which then can be correlated, we can subtract the images, you can do some other tracking um, algorithm, and 
then differentiate the particles from inside, from the particles outside. But you might have also seen that bubbles might be introduced by this process depending on the product specificities. So also here then it's very important by algorithms or by some pre-spinning uh, turrets we remove bubbles to the extent possible. We can apply different optical setups, for example, different one for the floaters, different one for the moving particles, others um, for more sticking particles, which do not move that heavily. We can have different lighting and camera setups from different angles. If you want to do several inspections on the same station, you can have toggling lights, so meaning um, recording alternating images. This is typically done at speeds of 400, 600 watts per minute for small containers. This is rather typical. This is just an aqueous solution, but pharmaceutical products can also be more difficult to inspect. This is also the term DIP, difficult to inspect products. This could be something like milky product or very viscous product. So then here, we have to do more tricks. We have the toolbox available, and now we are happy to discuss with you your application and find the tailored solution to your inspection task. Thank you very much.